If you want to make the most out of your cover crops, one of the most important skills that you can learn is developing the correct seeding ratios for your cover crop mixes. If you've watched the other videos in this cover crop series, maybe you've identified cover crops that you want to grow and that will work well for your purposes in your context. But how do you determine those correct ratios? I'm Rob from Dottle Family Farms and we grow cover crops to feed our livestock while also improving soil health. This past weekend, I planted 10 acres of cover crops with two different seeding mixtures at two different rates for two different purposes. In this video, let's discuss how you determine how much of what seed to plant in your mix and how much to plant per acre. Now, why would you want to mix your own cover crop seed? In fact, in many applications, cover crop seed companies will sell mixes for specific purposes that you can just pre-purchase. The two companies that I've used the most are Green Cover Seed and Petra Seeds. Petra Seeds is located in Alabama. It's a two and a half to three hour drive from me. It's real close and Richard Petcher is incredibly knowledgeable about what grows well in my southern environment. But they don't have as many diverse options as I'd like. I do like their products a lot though. Green Cover Seed probably has the most diverse cover crops of anyone that I've found. I've worked with Jakin and Dylan, both of their salespeople, and they're really knowledgeable about what should work even in my area. I suspect that all their sales staff is really knowledgeable. Chances are that if you are growing a cover crop for cows to graze or for soil health, either of these companies, or maybe even many others, will have a mix that'll fit your needs. So why would you want to put together your own mix? First, shipping costs can be incredibly high. I ordered 500 pounds of a spring pea oat blend from Green Cover Seed, enough to plant five acres. It cost me $713 total, $310 for the seed and $403 for the freight. And herein lies the problem. If you don't have a good seed mixer close to you, freight costs are really high for bulkier items. Now freight costs would be roughly $300 to $500 per pallet, which is not bad. I could order a ton and store it for a few months, but I don't have a good place to store store it. I rarely plant more than 10 acres at a time like I did this weekend and I'm often planting a couple acres every so often as the cows or the pigs graze it. Second, and most important for me, I'm creating custom mixes for different species of animals that are grazing those crops. But those grazing mixes are primarily used for cows and to a lesser extent other ruminants. There's very little information on growing cover crops for pigs especially for year-round grazing. I have scoured the web for information from extension services to nutritional information to learn what I can about growing cover crops and forages for pigs, but no one is doing what I'm doing. Now, pastured pig producers do plant cover crops, mostly after the pigs leave an area. And when the pigs return the paddock, they'll graze those cover crops and the pigs will devour them. But the pigs do not receive a substantive portion of their nutrition from the cover crops. But the nutrition of the proteins, the carbs, and all that that puts on muscle normally comes from the grain. I need plants that I can grow year round that will replace significant portions of my pig's diets, up to 70 or 90%. I have worked with swine nutrition researchers with PhDs, commercial hog growers, veterinarians, professors, and many others, and there's just not much information available about forages that you can grow for pig nutrition to replace their diets. So the pre-mixed formulas do not work in my context. I need different rates of different crops. Now, if you're grazing cover crops with cows, there's a world of a lot of information, but with pigs, it's a different scenario. Like me, you may have to create a custom mix with what you have available when planting. So I had some sorghum sedan grass seed already, along with buckwheat and dwarf Essex rape. They also have other seed stocks for wildlife enthusiasts like sunflowers, clovers, iron and clay cow peas, joint vetch, and some others. This year, I tried joint vetch. I've never grown it before, have no idea how it'll perform. The iron and clay cowpeas aren't nearly as good as the Red Ripper cowpeas or Chinese red cowpeas in terms of grazing. They're not as aggressive, but it's something that I can plant in the mix. Now, I'm gonna to go to the house now and show you a spreadsheet that I use to calculate these mixes. Theoretically, you should be able to take the full seeding rate uh, of each of these crops. And if you've got 10 crops, divide the full seeding rate by 10 and that should be what you should plant per acre on a practical perspective it's just not realistic for example some of these crops like red clover chicory and dwarf essex rape are not going to perform very well in the warm season 
the chicory and the rape should. The red clover is just a wild guess on my part. So taking the number of different crops that you're planting and dividing their full seeding rates by those number of crops is not the best practice. Secondly, some of these crops are going to take advantage of sunlight that is missed by the other crops. For example, chicory and dwarf Essex rape uh, will stay lower to the ground and capture sunlight that's missed elsewhere. I, I tend to think of cover crops into uh, four different classes. Uh, first, you've got your grasses, like your sorghum sedan grass, wheat, triticale, and so on. Then you've got your broadleaves plants, things like sunflowers and buckwheat. You, some people will include brassicas in there. You've also got your legumes like your cowpeas, your joint vets, your soybeans, and your red clovers. And then finally, you've got your forbs, those lower growing things, uh, typically that are mineral rich like chicory, Boston plantain, and others. I try to have a mix with each of these things represented. So in this first mix for cows, the sorghum sedan grass is the main component of this mix. It's going to provide the nutrition for the cows and it's going to provide the bulk of the soil improvement. Cow peas, red clover, chicory, vetch, buckwheat, those are just kind of additional things that help supplement the grass. And so I've got the sorghum sedan grass at 16 pounds to the acre. So these other crops are basically just supplementing the sorghum sedan grass. The buckwheat is not going to really compete with the sorghum sedan grass. At first it will a little bit, but it blooms within 30 days. Uh, in 70, 80 days it's dying, already put on hard seed, and it will regrow um, if it's mown or grazed or something like that. But at 16 pounds to the acre, this sorghum sedan grass uh, can dominate. It won't be so thin that it's pretty useless, but it should be thin enough that the cow peas, the red clover, the chicory, the joint vetch, or some of these other crops do get a chance to grow and add some protein and add some uh, nitrogen fixation benefits to the crop. But again, that's grazed mostly with cows. The second mix that I've planted uh, is specifically for pigs to graze. Because of that, I drastically reduced the amount of sorghum sedan grass that I wanted in that mix. So um, it's planted at about 11 pounds to the acre. Uh, again, that's good enough for some soil improvement benefits, but not so much that it's overly competitive with these other crops. But in that second mix where the pigs are going to graze, I want the chance for these higher protein feeds like the soybeans, the dwarf Essex rape, the chicory, the red clover, the cow peas, and the buckwheat to um, perform well. Buckwheat isn't particularly high in protein, but it is high in lysine, and it's the pig's preferred forage. If the sorghum sedan grass were planted at 16 or even 20 pounds to the acre, it'd be way too thick. Um, I was actually going for 8 pounds to the acre uh, for the sorghum sedan grass. But the combination of higher protein feeds like the soybeans, the dwarf Essex rape, the chicory, the red clover, uh, the cow peas, and the buckwheat will provide the pigs a lot of diverse, high-protein nutrition. The reason that diversity is so important compared to just red clover or just soybeans is that each of those crops have different amino acid profiles and the amino acid profile of the protein is critical for pigs to perform really, really well. That's why I try to grow much more diversity for my pigs. Now, you'll notice that the red clover in both of these mixes uh, is right at the full seeding rate or even a little bit higher. Red clover is not a very competitive plant. Um, chicory, I just add a little bit of that in there so that if it, it can help germinate and get growing if it gets a little bit of light. Dwarf Essex rape, it's a higher protein feed. Um, it's at about a third or half of the recommended growing rate in each of these mixes. The forage soybeans at eight pounds to the acre. Um, if I thought that they would grow well, then I would have planted them much thicker. I probably would have planted them at 15 to 20 pounds to the acre. <laughs> but I think the first week in April is a little early to be planting soybeans. Uh, I don't think they germinate very well in real wet conditions. And we've gotten three inches of rain uh, since I planted these crops four days ago. But just to recap, so the first thing that you do is you figure out your full seeding rate. Figure out the plants that you have in those individual classes. Like if it's a grass, uh, you want that to be... 25 to 30 percent of the mix maybe more if you're only grazing cows 
but you also want to have your uh, broadleaf plants like the buckwheat and the sunflowers, uh, your brassicas like the dwarf Essex rate, purple top turnips, radishes, and so on. Uh, and then your forbs like chicory and Boston plantain, those lower growing crops um, that really add a lot of nutrients to the mixes. Um, if I were growing hybrid pearl millet um, in these mixes, then I would have put 50 pounds of hybrid pearl millet in mix one and uh, 50 pounds of sorghum sedan grass. Um, just because if I'd put a full 100 pounds of each, nothing else would have grown in this mix. I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of how I figure out my seeding rates for my cover crops. Again, this is not my forte. Um, but it's how I get started, and then, you know, I, I make some adjustments uh, year after year, season after season. Thanks for sticking through this video so far with me. I know it's been a lot of information. And in fact, you may be paralyzed thinking that you'll never get it right. Let me just tell you, you won't. But chances are you're not going to really get it wrong either. Remember, this is about getting the most out of your cover crops. It's not about avoiding mistakes. There will be some mistakes. But really, what this is about is about planting, testing, trying things out, and learning from the very beginning. You see, to me, the biggest problem is that people don't try anything at all. Even if the only thing you do is you plant 10 square feet of buckwheat for the insects, or maybe you plant some sorghum sedan grass and cowpeas for, or clovers for your cows or even your pigs, it's not gonna be perfect, but it will amaze you and drive you to do it again and to learn even more the next time. One of those crops will amaze you and, it, and that learning will drive you to try something new the next time. You can do it. If you got something out of this video, maybe you wanna give back. It would do me a huge favor if you'd share this video with everyone who might get some value out of it. Now don't spam people. But the more people who learn, the more people who try things, the more people who pool our collective knowledge together, the more we learn and grow. Of course, you can also join our channel membership as a way of saying, saying thank you as well. It's really encouraging to see people getting enough value out of this comment to commit the $4.99 a month to take that membership. Anyway, take care and I hope you have a great day.